Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. These words of Jesus in the Holy Gospel that I just read to you are very familiar to us. Now, those sayings are called the Beatitudes. Jesus saying, blessed are those who do this, blessed are those who do that. Christ is teaching us. He is indoctrinating us. He's telling us how to live. And the word beatitude can also mean happiness. Um, blessed are they could also mean happy are they. In an age where people today will say, no one will tell me how to live my life, manifesting a spiritual arrogance, Christ comes and teaches us how to live. He tells us how to live. Therefore, we Christians, the followers of Jesus, we must be humble. We must have the humility to seek what He wants us to know, to seek to do His will. Scripture says, Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth. The Beatitudes of Christ are different than what people say today about how to live, how to find happiness in this life. You know that people are searching for happiness. They want happiness in their family, in their marriage, in all their relationships, happiness in their work, in their leisure, in their retirement. I just want to be happy, people will say. This search for happiness is so interwoven into our minds and hearts that it is almost a cultural instinct for us to say to young people, you must do what makes you happy. But the Holy Gospel of Christ moves us into a much larger realm. The Beatitudes begin, as Jesus says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And then the last beatitude of Jesus, Blessed are those, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. This is very important. Christ is showing us now that to be happy in this life, we must think about heaven. According to the Holy Gospel, we must think about eternal life. Christ is teaching us how to live in this world, and He's telling us to think about heaven. To be happy in this world, we have to think about the next world. That's what Jesus is telling us. Not something that people today think about often. Even among Christians, even within the Catholic community, think about it. When was the last time you heard a fellow Catholic or a fellow Christian manifest a sincere desire to make it to heaven? Do you think about heaven? Is that what you want out of life, to make it to heaven? It's alarming that there are many Catholics who don't even care about heaven, about eternal life. They're so focused only on this world and they fail to remember eternal life. But Christ, the teacher, is telling us, if we want to be happy in this life, we must set our greatest hope, our greatest treasure in heaven, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. The teaching in the Holy Gospel of the Beatitudes taught by Christ run contrary to the values of this world. The world promotes happiness by saying we must amass a great fortune and have great control of that fortune. But Christ says, Blessed are the poor in spirit. That is, blessed are those who simply rely on God, who trust that God will provide for what they need. Blessed are those who thank God 
for the gifts that they have and who are wisely generous with the gifts that God has given to them. The world promises happiness, but promises only a shallow happiness, based only on emotional excitement. But the Son of God says, Blessed, happy are those who mourn. That is, those who lament the sins of the world, especially their own sins, those who are opposed to the sins of the world. The world says that we will be happy if we have power, if we have control over every situation, indeed control over other people, if things are done the way we want them done. But the Son of the Blessed Virgin Mary says, Blessed are the meek, that is, those who seek to know God's will and to do it, those who put great effort into being obedient to God and to God's servant. The world tells us to get away with whatever we can get away with. The sky won't fall on you if you do this or that. Don't make a big deal about morality and sin. Be free. Do whatever you want. But the Messiah says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That is, those who want to satisfy the law of God. First and foremost, they are the ones who are happy. Revenge, the world counsels us to, ex to have on others who have harmed us. Rejection, indeed hatred, of those who have done evil to us. Jesus says, blessed are the merciful. That is, happy are those who hate the sin, but love the sinner. Those who will not hate anyone, but will forgive them. This lesson on mercy I find very important um, both in our own lives but also on a large scale in the world. I think of the poor tormented country of Iraq. You know there is great suffering in that country, uh, much violence and certainly uh, people are free to make their judgment on why things are the way they are in Iraq. But I am firmly convinced that the only way to peace in Iraq is mercy, is if the hearts of men will practice mercy one toward another. Man's heart can be filled with animosity toward someone, and the only way to overcome that animosity is mercy. Mercy, very important on the large scale of a nation or of the world, but also in your life, in your family, in your relationships. There shall be no peace, there shall be no unity, if mercy is not practiced. The world tells us we shall find happiness with lust impurity, pornography, which is one of the most thriving and corrupt industries in the nation, infidelity. But Jesus, our Lord, says, Blessed are the pure in heart. That is, those who practice the virtue of chastity, those who honor marriage, who honor the laws of Christ within their marriage, those who respect the dignity of human sexuality, they shall see God they shall see God. The world tells us that being accepted by everyone is very important, that we have to win a popularity contest, we have to be famous and successful, that we have to think along the ways of everyone else around us, that we must do things that everyone else will agree with. But our Lord says, no, blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. That is, happy are those who strive to think, to act, to desire in a way that is pleasing to Christ, regardless of whether it is popular or not. Jesus Christ, our Lord, the Son of the Father, the Son of the Virgin Mary, is teaching us how to live and how to be happy. This Gospel, the Beatitudes, is very familiar to us. Perhaps we even have it memorized, we've heard it so often. But it is not easy to apply this to our life every day. Many years ago there was a great saint named Saint Benedict, a Catholic monk, and lived in the 5th century. And he had a teaching about how to live for Christ. And he gives us a key on how to live the life of the Beatitudes, to follow the way of Christ. This is what the great Saint Benedict has to say. That we must have 
the vision of death before our eyes every day. We must have the vision of death before our eyes every day. Think about this. When we come to the end of our life, we shall only have one thing left, and that is God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Most Holy Trinity. At that moment, the only thing that matters is our relationship to God. In that moment, either we are loving Him or we are not. Dear brothers and sisters, it sounds odd. Christ teaches us to think about heaven, that is, to look beyond this world. The saints teach us to be aware of death, that is, the moment of our departure from this world. But herein is found the secret to happiness. The Son of God came from heaven, born of the Virgin Mary, He came to earth, He died on the cross, He rose on Easter Sunday, and He went back to heaven in His ascension. What do the Beatitudes of Jesus teach us? They teach us to live in friendship with this Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of the Beatitudes. To let Him be the Lord of our lives, to let Him be the Lord of everything, our actions, our desires, our thoughts. We want Him to be the Lord of our lives and not us. The Beatitudes teach us to follow in His footsteps. Christ is our divine friend and indeed He has taught us well. Let us be good students of the good teacher, Jesus Christ. In this way, brothers and sisters, we shall come to real happiness, a happiness that the world cannot take away, a happiness in this life, and eternal joy in the life to come. God bless you.